Hello, hello, hello. This is Lee Fuller with the Bible in Real Life podcast, and welcome. I am so glad you tuned in today. I am glad to be here, but um, <laughs> even though I'm super happy, super glad to be here today, I want to discuss something that's very serious. I want to discuss something. Let me bring my voice down. Let me bring my, my rate down to a somber time. Today we're going to talk about what to do when you don't feel God in real life. Okay. So, <laughs> whoa, Lee, uh, that just kind of turned mellow, kind of turned serious, but it's a serious topic that we want to talk about. So on the podcast, we like to talk about what it is like to be a Christian and just kind of going through this walk in real life. And I've been there. Many of the people I've talked to have been there. And I want to know, have you ever been there? Right. When when um, you don't feel God like you used to or or there's moments where there it feels like there's a distance. You know, it's like I'm over here and God, you're way over there. Have you ever had a time where where you're praying um, and it feels like it's bouncing off of the ceiling. It doesn't make it to the second floor of the house, right? Uh, that's what we're going to talk about today because I think this is reality and many people struggle with it and it causes us to go to some weird places in our mind and today we want to talk about it. So First of all, my name's Lee Fuller, and uh, I'm glad to have you here. If you have not already subscribed to the podcast, make sure you go to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, and subscribe, all right? So um, let me talk a little bit. What's been going on? Well, um, holiday season's coming up, so I'm super excited about the holidays, to, you know, a chance to get away from the hustle and bustle of the uh, non-holiday time of the year, <laughs> right? Uh, and actually pick up the other hustle and bustle part, right? Where there is this, where there is this um, uh, holiday, holiday season. People tend to just be a little more cheerful, just to be a little lighter, right? Uh, during this time. So I'm happy for that. Let's see. I'm so glad we uh, <laughs> we've been working on science fair projects and all that. So, um, yes, we we missed it when we were out of school for the whole COVID nineteen stuff, and now they're back. I'm like, okay, some of this stuff I did not miss. I did not miss working on science boards and science projects and all that. But hey, I was talking to my daughter, and I said. I said, yeah, you know, you got a lot more responsibilities. You got a lot more things going on now that you're in another grade and back in school. And she said, you know what? Uh, I It all comes with it, right? It's, she said, it's like a bag. You know, there's some good stuff in the bag and there's some bad stuff in the bag, but you, you want to keep the bag. And I said, you know what? That's a very mature you know, tween like approach. <laughs> and and that's kind of how I feel about um about life, about what's going on today in our world. You know, it's kind of a mixed bag. There's some good things that are going on and we can rejoice about it. And there's some bad things and we say, even so, Lord, quickly come. Even so come, Lord, quickly, right? <laughs> Check to the end of the book. Hey, just come back soon. Right. Um, but but that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, today there, uh, today's going to be me and you as we delve into different things. I am um, continuing to schedule guests and I'm excited about some of the upcoming people we're going to talk about and some of the topics that we will be discussing on the podcast. So uh, we're moving in a good direction and I'm super glad to have you along with us in the journey. So today, Let's get into our topic, and that is how, um, uh, what to do when you don't feel God, you know, or when he feels distant. So I can remember, um, 
I can remember times in my life where, I mean, you know, the shirt, Jesus is your homeboy. Like you feel like you and Jesus are like, oh, the, the passion is there. The communication is there. I can remember uh, feeling God so strongly at various times in my life. Um, there was a, there was a camp that we used to go to. Uh, I went to, I was a counselor there. And then later I took multiple groups of kids to KAA, you know, it's kids across America. We went all the way from Florida to, I think it's in like Branson, Missouri, right? That's a long ride. And the only reason we would take, cause we passed a whole bunch of camps and stuff along the way. But the reason we would take them there, cause we knew that God lived in Branson, <laughs> <laughs> that the the campground was holy right um but seriously there was some there's been some times in my life where you felt such a strong connection such a strong relationship with god and you you realize wow the christian life can be so much more right there's been times when i'm sitting in my study and i'm i'm digging into god's word and i'm like you know, you have that, what is it, that um, Isaiah 6 moment, you know, where you look up and I see the Lord high and lifted up and his glory fills the temple and the angels are going, holy, holy, right? So many of us have had those moments, but, you know, sometimes in, in when I'm dealing with uh, bills or deadlines or car issues or, you know, school issues or the, the country or politics or deployments or whatever, whatever the issue is, sometimes you're going into your word or, or you're going to a church service or you're going to, um, you're in prayer time and it seems silent. It seems like I'm just in this thing by myself. Is this normal? Is this a part of the Christian experience? Um, when I talk to people, they say, yes, they're um, not feeling God as close all the time is something that many Christians experience so much. So um, in Psalms and listen, listen, I was teaching the class and we were talking about Psalms and I, I, I brought up the fact, well, let me read the Psalms and then I can, I'll talk about it a little bit. So Psalms 13, um, one and two says, Oh, um, I'm sorry. Psalms 13, one and two, how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul? And have sorrow in my heart all the day. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? And there is this, there is this realness that we find in the Psalms. There is this realness of emotion, this realness of feeling. David's going through a time where he's like, Lord, will you forget me forever? You know, you ever been that time where you're praying and you feel like, like I'm not getting anything out of this. Um, Lord, are you even here? Are you listening? I'm crying out to you. Are you paying attention? Right? Because, because, uh, sometimes that, that emotional connection, that, that, um, feeling part isn't there. And so it started me down this track of asking a couple of questions, you know, should, I long for that, that feeling of God, that surrounding of God's, you know, presence. Should I long for that feeling? Um, and, and I, I have to, I have to ask myself because sometimes if our relationship is built on those feelings, that that could not be the sign of a strong, healthy relationship. And here's what I mean. Um, the, the emotional aspect of our relationship with God, the feeling of a relationship with God 
is is not a super solid foundation. Why? Because feelings change. I mean, some, you know, people, <laughs> you know, I was listening to this marketing book. I'm, I'm a marketing guy. And we talked about how we're these emotional bags, right? <laughs> these emotional bags of flesh. So our feelings can, can, can be swayed. Our emotions can be fleeting, right? So name something that, that would be healthy if it was based solely on feeling, right? Uh, let's see. Mm, so let's say my relationship with my wife. If it was based solely on feelings, then there will be, that's not a solid foundation to build a relationship because sometimes, and I don't know, maybe this is just me. Maybe this is my therapy session. Sometimes I feel a certain way when I wake up, right? I'm like, you know what? This is a mess or this is crazy or whatever, right? Sometimes, you you know, the old folks used to say, got up on the wrong side of the bed. Hey, you need to get back in the bed and get on the other side, right? Because our feelings are a mess. Our feelings change, you know? My emotion toward my children. Um, hey, sometimes, you, you know what? Transparent moment. So I had to apologize to my eight-year-old. Now, I, I, as a parent, I don't, I try not to make it a habit <laughs> of having to apologize to children about stuff I say. But um, I was, I, man, I missed an important, um, I missed an important appointment. And I was mad at myself because I, I, I took a nap, which I normally don't do, but I was so tired. I took a nap and I missed an important appointment. I mean, money was on the line type of appointment. So I'm upset. And my daughter came and asked me a question. I was like, no, I just went out. No, we're not going to do it. Close my door. Get out. Right. And it wasn't her fault. It was me. I had messed up. I had overslept. I had missed my appointment. So now my emotions and frustrations, everything's all over the place. So um, where, where, where am I going with the story? Oh, my point was um, we as emotional flesh, Emotional people are very emotional. So our relationship with God cannot be based solely on these emotional outbursts or these emotional instances, right? But that's one of the reasons I love the Psalms. Because when you go through the Psalms, you see where, where David and the other psalmists, they express their emotion to God. They say, hey, here is how I'm feeling here is what's going on. And you know what? God's not afraid of your emotion. God is not afraid of you going through and sharing with him what you're feeling. So this time where David is saying, how long will you forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? Right? Uh, if that's how you're feeling, then take it to the Lord. Right? Right? Um, anything that you're dealing with or facing, take it to the Lord. You know, sometimes it seems a little embarrassing. I'm reading the Bible, I'm teaching the Bible, and sometimes I feel like, God, I don't feel like you're close to me, you know? And that's when I have to realize that our relationship with God ha can be emotional, but it's not built on emotional on emotion. Because if it's built on emotion, then you continue to search and chase the emotion of it versus the truth of what God says. So we're going to we're going to get into that in a minute. But so I start saying, OK, when I feel like this, um, should I should I not expect emotional connection with God? And then I, I read again in the Bible, which is our source of life and truth. Um, uh, our relationship with God is supposed to include our emotion. Why? Because we are emotional creatures, right? Um, Philippians 4.4 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So rejoice has this emotional tone to it, right? You know, yes, I'm so glad that the Lord is alive, that the Lord is with me. So there should be that sense of joy. 
You know, Psalms 97, 12, rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name, right? So there is that element of emotion that is a part of our relationship with Christ. So, uh, and I think that's why, because we've tasted of the of the heavenly gift, right? Because we've had that emotional um, feeling, that's why we can tell when it's missing. That's why we can tell when it's a little different or feel a little off. So um, even though the, the Christian sometimes goes through these, these areas where there's not as much emotion or God feels distant, right? You know, the Bible talks about look through a glass darkly. I don't think it's talking about it in this context, but the idea of we don't always see it clearly what's going on. And sometimes God feels distant, um, but... It's only because we've had those emotional encounters. It's because we have felt the weight of sin lift off us. But we have seen our eyes open so that we can see. The Bible says he's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So we have been able to behold his glory and see the light of God. When there's these times of not seeing clearly or these times of darkness, These times of, Lord, where are you? I don't sense your presence. I don't feel your presence around me. This does allow us to to, um, start to wonder, hey, what's going wrong? But here here is where it should not take you. It should not take you to a sense of losing your salvation. Okay? Um, Just because the nearness or the sweet fellowship of God. Um, Sometimes if you aren't experiencing that sweet communion, that sweet fellowship with God um, for the believer, so that's not an indication of loss of salvation. So don't let it take you there, okay? Don't let the enemy, um, that our adversary, the devil, start to put things in your head, say, oh, that means you are not saved. Where is your God now? Blah, 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 blah. So that's not an indication of loss of salvation. um, today we're going to talk about what some what it may be an indication of and how to fix it or how to remedy the situation. Okay, so um, with that said, uh, let me recap and then drive forward. So in recap, first, <clears throat> um, emotional. Um, we are emotional beings. So it is important to have that emotional and relational connection with God, right? The Bible encourages us to rejoice. The Bible talks about the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, right? So there is that emotional connection. And when it's missing, we should recognize that it's missing, just like any other relationship. Hey, if you haven't talked to your dad in a while, or you haven't talked to someone that you're close to in a while, you 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 sense the the emotional disconnect right um so there was there was something else i was going to talk about how our feelings i mentioned a little bit oh how our feelings um we shouldn't we shouldn't be necessarily led by our feelings but should be led by truth and how we behave should not be based solely on how we feel. Come on. Um, If I only got up to work when I felt like working, (laughs) I wouldn't be doing as well as as we're doing. (laughs) Because a lot of our life, and adults realize this, and this is kind of a segue into where I'm going, Uh, Mature people realize this, that emotions are a great follower, but not a great leader, okay? The truth is the great leader. The direction, I feel like I'm very close to the camera today, but I was like, I was like, the direction, right? Um, Your life needs to be built on truth and not emotion because your emotions will change. You know, I have different emotions when I'm hungry, <laughs> yeah, right? Like it's, emotions get changed. I have different emotions when it's cold outside versus when the sun is shining, right? So I can't base my relationship with Christ, 
my relationship with my family, my relationship with my children based on feelings or emotion. I have to base it on the truth, right? So if you are in a season where you don't feel God's presence in your study time, or if you don't feel God's presence when you are, uh, when you wake up in the morning and you're reading, if you don't feel God's presence, you know, occasionally when you're even around church, then um, there's there's some things we have to know, okay? Um, we have to walk by truth. And the truth is the Bible teaches um, in Hebrews 13, 5, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he said, and here it is, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So throughout scripture, we see this reminder that God will never leave you or forsake you. Now he's talking to his children, right? He's talking to uh, those that believe in him, but he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. So this is truth. This is, you know, write it down, take a picture, etch it in stone because the Bible declares that God will never leave you or forsake you. Okay, Joshua 1 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Right. So we see it in Hebrews. We see it in Joshua that God says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Let's go to Deuteronomy, which is the law. Uh, verse 8, uh, 31 8. And it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. <coughs> so, when my emotions, when my, my feelings don't align with scripture, then which one has changed, right? My feelings have changed. My emotions have changed because the scripture says that God will be with you. The scripture says God will never leave you or forsake you. He doesn't turn his back on you. Um, Psalms 38, 14 says, uh, Psalms 38, uh, blah, Lee, read it. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. So even if your spirit is crushed, even if your heart is broken, God has not left you, okay? So these are the truths that we have to hold on to. So, um, so even when you don't feel it, even when you're studying and you're reading or you're doing what God tells you to do and you don't feel it, it doesn't mean that God has left you or forsaken you. Okay. So that is the truth of scripture. So when my emotions get all crazy, Hey, I need truth because truth is what grounds us. Truth is what anchors us to, uh, the real world, right? <laughs> um, um, in this world, there are God's truth is the reality of the situation. So sometimes we see the smoke. Sometimes we see the mirror. Sometimes we hear the noise. Oh, I don't know what's going on. It's the truth of God that God doesn't leave you nor forsake you. Okay. Whew. Whew. So my salvation is intact, right? The God of my salvation is still near and I can walk in that. Romans 8 37 through 39 says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And then he goes on to name some things. Check this out. He says, For I am sure, Paul said, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
Okay. Truth. Hashtag facts. Hashtag Bible is real. <laughs> okay. So, well, Lee, if all these things are true, then what do I do when I feel something different than what Bible truth tells me? Right. How do I, how do I, um, when I don't feel it, right. I'm praying, you know, I look at my brother at church and it looks like, man, he is, he is experiencing a whole different thing than I'm experiencing right now. <laughs> right. Um, uh, so I guess there's a couple of things. There's a couple of things. Um, I, you know, I was talking to talking to one of my mentors about this the other day, but um, we can't compare, right? You shouldn't really compare your walk with someone else's walk. Um, Jesus was talking to Peter because Peter had done something. Peter had denied Jesus three times. And then Peter, God is having this conversation. Hey, Peter, you love me? Do you love me? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then Peter says, well, what about him? Right. Like basically, um, I know, Lord, we're having this conversation, but what's what's the deal with this other believer? Right. What's up with John? Is who he was referring to. And Jesus focused his attention. It's like, hey, this conversation is about me and you. Right. So sometimes we'll think that other people are closer to God and their walk is super strong and it feels like, you know, God shows up on their doorstep every morning and they eat coffee together and God fills them. Well, why don't I experience that? God says, first of all, don't compare your relationship, my relationship with them to my relationship with you because um, <clears throat> I have the same desire to be with you. All right. So let's not worry about what other people are experiencing or feeling or how their devotionals go in the morning. Let's let's deal with me and you. There is a quote by A.W. Tozer, a Bible teacher, and he said this. And I think this quote is very interesting. Everyone is as close to God as they want to be. Everyone is as close to God as they want to be. And what do I mean by that? I mean that um, if there is a, if you sense there is a distance between you and God, if you sense that there are, there is a, a lull or I don't feel God or I don't see God working or I can't experience him like I used to, then there's some things you can do about it. Right. There's some adjustments we can make. There's certain steps or ideas that we can contemplate to see, am I as close to God as I want to be? Or am I, am I, do I have something in the way? Right. So let's go through it. And I, I tried to do it in the context of ours. Right. You know, um, as a as a expounder of scripture and a communicator, I try to make things remember. I said rememberable. Help me, Jesus. Right. So as a growing communicator, <laughs> Lord, you ain't got to help me on the radio. Right. Um, as a growing communicator. Right. Um, I try to make things memorable. So let's let's look at what do we do? I'm um, looking at my notes, make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so quick recap, and then we're going to run into it. Um, we are emotional creatures. God has, uh, there is an emotional aspect of our relationship with God. Facts, right? Uh, that's what Psalms reminds us of. We can, we can be emotional. We can emote. We can share our feelings and emotions with God, right? Emotions are an aspect of it, but... Sometimes reality does not match emotions. We have to believe the truth of God versus when, when our emotions conflict with the truth of God, then the truth of God is what we can rely on because God's truth is unchanging. Emotions change based on the weather, based on the time of day. Sometimes I'm, I feel better about myself in the morning than I do in the afternoon. <laughs> you know, sometimes I eat lunch and feel better. I'm like, okay, now today's a good day, right? 
<laughs> so we can't make, what is it? Emotions make you cry sometimes? Um, wait, I don't know if that's my Bible song. But my point is, <laughs> um, emotions are fickle. Emotions change. But guys, truth is forever. But if you are feeling where there is this disconnection, I don't feel as close to God as I used to. Here are some things you want to consider, right? Um, if you're taking out notes, now's the time to follow along with the notes. And they begin with R, you know, for, for my country folk, they begin with Ara, right? <laughs> because I've got you. And I almost said Ara. So, uh, Ara. Uh, the first is, what do I do if I don't feel close to God? The first thing is repent if necessary, Okay. Ask yourself, is there something in my life that has turned me away from God, right? Is there something that has turned me away from God? You know, in Genesis, um, God asked the question. God said, Adam, where are you? And when I think about this, I think it was so interesting because God showed up at the same time and at the same place he had always been showing up, right? In the cool of the day, God came to the garden where he would commune with Adam. When Adam sinned, Adam was no longer in place, right? He was no longer, the Bible says Adam was hiding from God. So God wasn't missing, Adam was missing. <clears throat> so the first R is, is there some area of sin in my life? Is there some area in which I need to repent? Because if I'm not feeling God, or if I'm, if um, God seems distant, then maybe I left, right? Maybe God is still right where he always was. And I used to come to him with an open and a, a heart to receive. But when sin comes in, sin um, seeks to separate us, right? And sometimes when we feel like God is distant, it isn't that God left. It's maybe we left. Maybe sometime the cares of this world or something in our life has changed. You know, um, Psalms 51, and uh, for those uh, Bible scholars <laughs> um, and those that read, and I started paying attention to this. And this is something that can help you as you're studying the Bible as well. So in Psalms, like before Psalms, the first verse in many of the Psalms, sometimes there's an inscription to kind of tell what was the context of this Psalm. I, you know, now that I'm starting to pay attention a little more. Uh, and in Psalm 51, it talks about that this is, it says to the choir master, a Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet to him after he had gone into Bathsheba, right? So after David was confronted by Nathan the prophet, right? So Psalms 51 is around that a point in time. It's about that time. So when you read it, understand what's going on. But David says, uh, restore the joy of my salvation, right? So it was because of sin that was in his life. It's because of the the uh, adultery, you know, the murder, the plot and the murder <laughs> that he did. You know, he he lost some of the joy. He lost the joy of his salvation. He didn't lose the salvation. He lost the joy of it. And sometimes Satan will say, hey, see, you've lost your salvation. No, that's not what's going on. You know, the fellowship, the companionship, the joy of the salvation sometimes is covered by guilt and sin. So the first thing to do is repent when we don't feel close. Okay, let me let me evaluate, let me examine myself to see is there somewhere I'm lacking that is separating me or that is trying to separate my fellowship, come between me and God. So number one, try that, all right? Uh, hey, I'm not getting anything. First R is repent. Second one is recharge. Sometimes we're just so busy. Our lives become so cluttered and we're so uh, overwhelmed that we, we can't hear 
God speaking, right? We're sitting down, we're reading, blah, 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 but we're reading quickly because I know I'm supposed to, but in a few minutes, I got to get out and get done what I need to get done, right? Or I'm just checking the box, okay, but to recharge, hey, slow down, be still. You know, sometimes we were reading scripture where Jesus would separate himself and he would just go pray, right? So he had a, he has a big day of teaching. It's a big, it's been a big week of miracles. You know, he's been instructing his disciples. He's living with these guys. He's, he's sharing with them and there's time he'll just kind of steal away and be quiet. You know, there was a, there was a, a lady, um, older lady, and she said, you know, Lord's been talking to me this week and his words to me were telling me to just be still and know that I am God, right? And that's a reminder to me sometime. I just have to recharge. I just got to slow down. I just got to be still and know uh, and be still and just spend time with God, just kind of recharging. And what does that look like? Okay, lady, what does that look like? Sometimes it's kind of creating that environment. Slow down long enough. Hey, uh, instead of rushing through your devotions, you know, um, go for a walk, right? Um, go sit at the park and, and read your scripture there. You know, I think, I, I don't know, there's something about being in the environment that God created, right? Um, so I like to stand outside. So I'll stand outside, particularly at night. I'll look at the stars, you know, just because... I feel like I can see further at night because of the bright lights in the sky, the stars. I don't know if you can actually see further at night, but you can see stars. Um, some people like to uh, turn on their worship music, you know, just kind of creating this, um, creating this environment. Let me just be still, you know, and take this time to reconnect. Sometimes we get so distracted. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed, Right. Uh, a walk on the beach, you know, the water oftentimes is a good place. So just kind of create this environment to be still so we can recharge and say, okay, Lord, I am resting. You know, there's a story in scripture about Martha, Mar Mary and Martha, right? And many times I am Martha. Many times, hey, this got to be done. This needs to be done. Okay. And all these are good things. Hey, you are recording the podcast. Hey, you're teaching a Bible class or you're, you're serving at the, at the pantry or you are, um, you're working, right? You're going to work, <laughs> you're cooking dinner, you're doing all these things, which are great things. Right. And Martha goes to Jesus and say, Jesus, um, Tell Mary she need to get up and help me because I'm doing all these good things, right? I'm cleaning the house. I'm taking care of the kids. I'm, I'm taking care of my husband. I'm taking care of my wife. I'm doing my grocery shopping, blah, 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 right? And Jesus said, Martha, Mary chose the more important thing, right? And the more important thing was to slow down, sit down, and spend time with God. So you may just need to recharge, right? Um, I sometimes take a nap, you know, and then you wake up refreshed <laughs> in the region Bible, right? So repent <clears throat> from, if I'm feeling far away from God, Hey, I may need to repent. There may be sin that's separating me. Hey, I may need to just be still and no, just recharge, sit by the pool and, and spend time slowing down to hear from God. Maybe God's just, <clears throat> uh, there used to be this song. I'm clearing my throat because I think I want to sing it. I don't know. Um, uh, they say, I miss my time with you moments together. I want to be with you each day. Um, so that's just the, <laughs> that's, that's a song that, that used to come out where it says, I miss my time with you. Right. Um, next repent, recharge, you know, reconnect with other believers. Listen, this is so key. You know, there is, um, and I, and I don't like it as much. There is this, this, you know, lone wolf mentality that some Christians have that, Hey, I don't need nobody, just me and Jesus. Right. Uh, and I believe that sometime God will, 
um, when you're feeling distant that God has is not as close, I think sometimes it's because you haven't reconnected with his people. Okay. Matthew 18, 20 tells us for where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Right. So if you sense God is far off or Lord, why do you feel so distant? God tells us that, hey, you know what? When you get together with unbelievers, I'm sorry, when you get together with believers, right? When you get in the community of the saints, there is a presence of God that can show up amongst his believers, okay? So um, I know COVID is real. I understand that that for, for months, you know, People haven't been gathering in services or gathering in churches. I get it. Okay. So maybe, maybe, you know, don't gather 500 of (laughs) y'all. If that's, if you're concerned about the COVID thing, but grab a couple believers because a couple things happen when believers are together. Number one, God says, Hey, I I can show up in the midst of you. Uh, Another is the conversation changes. Right. When you get around believers, the conversation is different. You're 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 um, you're thinking on these things. The Bible says, what sort of things are just? What sort of things are holy? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And when these believers come together, there is that encouragement. There is that there is that kindred like, hey, I'm not by myself. Right. And a lot of time God shows up and warms our heart when we're amongst these other believers. You know, one interesting study you can do. I've done it a couple years ago, but um, study the one another's. Right. So if you get out of concordance, you know, and study the one another's. Uh, there's over 50, there's 58, 9, 59, maybe um, times in Scripture. I know it's over 50 times in scripture where you see the one another's, right? And it's hard to do these one another's when you're by yourself, right? Bible tells us in one place to encourage one another. Bible tells us to love one another, you know, carry one another's burdens, build up one another, instruct one another, confess to one another. All of the, all of these are aspects of the community. Um, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Why? Because there is an importance in being around others. So sometimes I know you can you can pray and you can study by yourself. I get that. But also if the Lord feels distant, maybe he's saying, I need you around other believers, you know, so reconnect with other believers. So Hopefully this is helping as I'm walking through what to do when you don't feel God, you know, for real, you know, and what I mean by that is you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do and you may not be experiencing him like you used to repent, right? There may be something that's separating you <clears throat> from fellowship, Re- recharge, hey, slow down, be still, take a walk, declutter, you know, get some of the distractions out the way so you can reconnect. Uh, recharge uh, your spirit, your mind, your soul. Reconnect with other believers. Get around people. You know, there used to be this thing called prayer partners. You know, not used to be, there still is. Um, um, But you'd have this person that you talk with and you commune with. And I'm telling you, there is power when God's people are together. So reconnect with other believers. Next, another one is kind of that return to your first love, right? In Revelation, he tells the church, you know, return to your first love. In James 4, 8, God says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you, okay? Um, If you are sensing God's afar off, you know, and you, um, you know, start to, to draw near to God, Start to, you know what, let me, let me seek after you. Let me, let me, you know, dive in. Let me get closer. Let me um, strengthen my walk, right? Maybe this should be a time of fasting, right? Where you reignite your passion. And, you know, one day I'll do a, 
I'll do a a podcast on fasting and biblical fasting and so forth. But it's this idea of abstaining from something so you can focus on God. You know, zoom in, you know, draw close. Lord, hey, I don't feel you like I used to. It feels like you're distant. You know, let me draw close to you because your word says, if I draw near to God, he'll draw near to me. He says that same verse, 4, 8. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lord, let me get focused on you. Let me clear my hands. Let me get focused on you and draw near to you. And your word says you will draw near to me. These are ways when you feel like God is distant. You know, you know what? Let me let me connect, reconnect. It's interesting. One of the um kind of that return to your first love kind of thing. Um, I remember there uh, Matthew six fifty something, maybe five fifty-eight. Um let me see, what is it? Uh, uh I'll have to uh, maybe I'll put in show notes or something. But what what the Bible says is there it's Matthew five fifty-eight. I gotta find it. Um but what happens is is Jesus there's some that that leave from following Jesus. And what Jesus does is he says, um nope, might be six fifty eight. Um, mm, nope, maybe John. Okay, either way. <laughs> ah, John, yep, John 6 58. Uh oh, Bible test, Bible test. Uh, last day, by his father sent me here. Fees, you said Capernaum. Okay. Yep. Um, oh, it's not 58. And that's why. So it's John 6, 68. I knew it was a long chapter, right? I knew it was a long chapter. But anyway, John 6, 68. Um, there's some disciples that go away from following Jesus, right? They're like, Jesus is like, hey, you got to eat my blood and drink my flesh. They're like, oh, okay. I just wanted, I just wanted the fish and biscuits, right? Um, so we turn, Jesus turns to Peter and say, you're going to leave too, Peter? And Peter said, um, Lord, to whom shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God, right? So returning to your first love, Lord, I'm not sure what's going on right now, but there is nowhere else I can go because you are the Holy One of Israel. You are, uh, you have eternal life, right? So it's kind of that, Lord, I'm going to draw near to you. Uh, uh, I, I don't sense you right now um, for whatever reason. I don't feel like you're close as we were, you know, when I was at camp or when I was a kid or two months ago or six months ago or whatever, or yesterday, but um, I'm not going anywhere, because where else can I go? You are God. You are the eternal life. You're the Holy One of Israel, right? So when you lean into God, I would say it's he'll draw nigh to you, right? So, um, okay, Lee, break it down. Recap. Um, so repent, right? Um, repent, recharge, reconnect with other believers, return to your first love. Now, this is one realize that this just may be a test. Hey, this may just be a season. My pastor says that the teacher doesn't talk during the test, right? And I think that was so good. That, that was good, Pastor Jay. Um, the teacher doesn't talk through the test. And you know what? When we look at Job, we see 40-something chapters where God doesn't say anything. Hey, he's going through, and he's like, why? They're like, why? you know, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And God doesn't say anything to the very end, right? And sometimes when um, when God is moving you to another season, sometimes when God is deepening his roots in you, sometimes when God is pushing you to that next level of faith or maturity or understanding, 
um, there will be this time of silence, you know, this, this radio silence where, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but I, I have asked for forgiveness. I don't find any, uh, my conscience is clear. I don't, I don't see any sin, overt sin or consistent sin in my life. Um, I'm going to church, you know, I'm seeking you daily. Sometimes you may be in the middle of a test, right? And it's during this time you continue to press in. You say, Lord, uh, there is a passage. Uh, I think it's in Psalms, uh, Psalms 27. When you get a chance, read that whole chapter, right? Because uh, in Psalm 27, um, David David says, the Lord is light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You know, so he's going through his thing. Um, and he says, one thing have I asked of the Lord and that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Right. So he's like, listen, um, there's a lot going on right now, but I am going to seek your face. I am going to seek after God. And sometime, um, when God removes his, um, you know, when you feel God is distant, it's that time where he's saying, are you going to push? Are you going to seek after me? Because those that seek shall find, right? And that's that growing, maturing part. So God can trust you. Hey, when, when, uh, God sometimes is quiet, Hey, I will trust you. I will depend on you. My faith is growing. I will follow hard after you. And, you know, God shows up and it's like, hey, you you passed the test, right? So um, that's another thing. And I think I have one more R. Oh, the last one is remember what God has done for you and others, right? You know, the... Um, sometimes when God is silent or when he feels afar off and sometimes I'm not experiencing it, sometimes I like to go to Hebrews because when I go to Hebrews chapter 11, I see this great cloud of witnesses, right? I see this faith chapter and I see that by faith. Well, Hebrews 11 reminds us, and I'm pulling it up now, um, Hebrews 11 reminds us, what does it say? Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, right? Or the evidence of things not seen. So it's during these times when I don't feel it, during these times when, you know, I may not sense him as strong as I strongly as I have in the past. This is a time where my faith is growing. So Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. So when I go through and I read the faith chapter, so it says, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. That's why I was saying sometimes when you go out in nature, you're looking around, you're like, you know what? By faith, I believe God, you did this. So I know you're there. You're um, by you, all things consist. So I know you're maintaining all this, right? But when you go through and you read it's by faith, a Abel did this, and by faith, uh, Enoch walked with God, and by faith, Noah did this, and by faith, Abraham did this, and by faith, Isaac, and by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, he died in faith, walked in faith, lived in faith, blah, 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 blah. You start to see, okay, Lord, <clears throat> my faith is growing because I'm seeing the testimony of what you've done in others, and because I know you're a faithful God, you did it for them, you'll do it for me, right? You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then you start thinking about in your life how in the past when I didn't think God was there or when I didn't know how God was going to work it out or I couldn't see what was happening. Now, when I look back, come on, I'm, I'm about to preach on the podcast. No, <laughs> but when I look back, I realize that God, you've never left me, that you've been there the whole time. You know, and then your faith is growing, your faith is mature, and your faith is 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 uh, become stronger, right? So sometimes God uses these seasons where He's silent, 
where he goes radio silent on us. Sometimes he uses these seasons where he's, he's, um, it's kind of like, um, when the Israelites, um, guy used to drop manna every day, right? Drop, drop manna every day. Boom, 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 boom. Here you go. Go outside, grab your food, grab your food. The Bible says when they went into the promised land, the manna ceased, right? Now they had to do their own um, planning and sowing and reaping, et cetera, et cetera. What am I saying? Sometimes the relationship changes, right? As the relationship changes, sometimes there's a silence in between those shifts. There's a silence in between that relationship because now uh, it's kind of like when Jesus died on the cross, right? Jesus was with them all the time, every day, walking with them three years, three years, three years. Then he was separate separated from him from three days. During those three days, he was working on something. And then he came back. And when he came back, um, he had come back with all power in his hand. And he said, hey, the Holy Spirit's coming. So there was a, po- a moment of silence. And then the relationship was elevated, right? So during this moment of silence, during this time when you don't feel God near, know that on the other side of this, you, you, Go through your R's, repent if necessary, take the time to recharge, reconnect with others, return to your first love, realize it could be a test, and remember all that God has done for you, knowing that your ladder will be greater. So then you start to appreciate those moments where, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I know that all things are working together for the good of those that love the Lord and called according to his purpose. Well, this has been, man, man, this turned out better than I thought it was. Well, uh, I thought it was great. Uh, hopefully you've been encouraged, right? In those, in those seasons where, where there isn't as much communication or you don't feel it, you begin to trust the truth of God's word and uh, grow. Amen. You know what? This, this might be, uh, I mean, I've only done like, this might be episode six or seven, but I think they're getting better. <laughs> I'm being encouraged myself. So I'm going to go back and listen to it. Uh, and if you find value in this, go ahead and leave us a review on on um, Apple Podcast or, let me see, can I leave a review on Spotify? Apple Podcast or Google Podcast, wherever you subscribe to and listen to this, go ahead and leave a review. It's greatly encouraged. Um, because if you find it valuable, then others may find it valuable as well. Um, okay, this is Lee Fuller. Welcome to, welcome. Uh, this has been the Bible in Real Life podcast. And today we discussed what to do when you don't feel God for real um, and how we can reconnect to those emotionals emotionals. Okay. I think it's time to go. I must be getting tired. All right. Bye-bye everybody. And I'll see you next week. Okay. This is Lee Fuller, the Bible in real life podcast. (laughs) Bye-bye everybody.